Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Surfer's Journey. Today's video is all about how to choose the perfect surfboard for you. And it's about understanding that there is no perfect surfboard. Unfortunately, you've been lied to. The surfing industry wants you to think that this particular board is the perfect board for you. But it might be the perfect board for a certain set of conditions and a certain surfer. But there is no perfect board for everyone. There are many factors that come into this. We're talking about your height, your weight, your skill level, the kind of waves that you actually surf. All these things come in to helping you choose the best board for you. And in today's video, I'm gonna help break that down for you so you can make a better decision when you go and buy your next board. And guys, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel now so you can stay up to date with all of my latest videos and tutorials. So before we start, I just want you guys to know that the boards that I have here today are boards that I've chosen. I'm not supported by any company and I'm not saying that these boards are the boards that you should have. These are the boards that I've chosen to ride for individual characteristics that I like and I've done my research and I would recommend that you do your research before you make any purchase of any board to make sure that that board is gonna suit your surfing. It can be really hard for a surfer to know where to start when it comes to choosing a surfboard. So I want you guys to use this as an example. I'll give you a baseline of my details and then you can use that to tweak the numbers based on your weight and your height and your skill level and the waves that you're gonna surf. So I'm 175 centimeters tall. I weigh 75 kilos and I would put myself in the category of an intermediate to advanced level surfer. Now, the board that I would ride as my high performance shortboard, let's start with this, is this board here. This board is a 511 and it comes in at 27.4 litres. This is just a standard polyurethane board, but it does come in a light team glass. Now I like to go lighter with my glass jobs because it makes the board flex a little bit more and it feels really light and explosive underfoot. The only problem with that is that the lifespan of the board is reduced because they obviously ding a lot easier. But I like the feeling. I would surf this kind of board in waves that are two foot plus, but really high quality. Powerful, punchy, good shape. It's gonna allow me to fit into those bowly sections and put my board on rail and it's gonna hold. You can see this board's got quite a bit of rocker. It's gonna fit into those steep sections. However, as conditions start to deteriorate and the waves lose their power, well, this board loses that ability to generate speed. It obviously still does, but it's not what it's made for. It's made to harness speed. So that's where I would consider going down to a groveler or a step down board like this. Now this board here is a 5'8 and it comes in at 26.5 litres. Now you might think, well hang on a second, you've just gone from 27.4 litres to 26.5. So you've dropped literage in a board that's gonna need more float. Well, this board is epoxy, which means it's gonna feel more buoyant under my feet and sit on the surface of the wave more. That's why I dropped literage for this one. I would surf this board in waves that are probably two to four foot, but aren't as steep or as punchy as waves that I'd want to surf my normal shortboard in. By going a little bit shorter and a little bit wider and a little bit thicker and a little bit flatter, I'm gonna be able to generate more speed in those waves that don't actually provide it for me. And that's going to allow me to have more fun in those conditions because I'll be able to slide the tail a little bit more and I'll still be able to have a good time. Moving on from my step down board, next we'll be going to a hybrid or a fish. 
So now the conditions are smaller again. We're talking one to three foot and the quality is pretty average. Fat, mushy waves. I'm gonna look at one of these two. I've got a 5.2 and a 5.3. Now the reason why I would choose between one and the other is that this one here is a quad and this board is a twin. Now both of them are very similar in design and are gonna allow me to have a great time when the waves are really average. Because they're shorter, flatter, wider, thicker, I'm gonna still be able to generate speed on waves that have none. I'm still gonna be able to do maneuvers on sections where on a high performance board, it just wouldn't happen. So that's where the benefit is in these. But in regards to the fin setup, if I wanna surf the twin fin, it allows me to really work on my rail surfing because I find that a twin fin doesn't let me surf in a flicky kind of way. Good surfing comes from rail to rail and I find the twin fin makes me surf like that. However, if I'm feeling like the waves are a little bit better and I want to surf with more aggression, I feel like the quad lets me do that a little bit more than the twin. I find the twin is a little bit tracky and a little bit more of a relaxed approach. I feel like I can be more aggressive on the quad and perform more advanced maneuvers. In regards to the literage of this, well this is a 26.5 litre board and it's 5.2. You can see all the foams packed in to the middle of the board and it's really wide. This is still going to let me have good paddling power, but as you go down in volume and size, boards become harder to paddle, but they become more responsive underfoot. So that's something to consider as well when you're looking at purchasing a board. Are you fit enough to paddle around a board that doesn't have as much volume as your previous board? So progressing on from my hybrid fish, then I've got a longboard. This one here is eight foot long and roughly comes in at 60 litres. Now the reason why I would choose to surf this longboard is on days where it's that knee to waist high and I really want to get out into the water but my other boards are inappropriate because they're going to sink and I'll be working way too hard for not much gain. This board just makes those conditions really enjoyable. You can go out, catch anything and just stand up and enjoy what riding a wave is all about. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. I hope that now you understand that there is not one perfect board for you, but what you need to have is multiple boards with a board that you've done research on that you believe is gonna go really well for you in a specific set of conditions. By having multiple boards, we're gonna be able to maximize each individual surf session that we have by choosing a board that was made to perform very well in that specific set of conditions. 
Remember to like the video and comment below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Thanks guys.